Liquids turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Bat Rider! Dire team pick. Times would be tough for Cloud9, but it'll be the, uh, the Bat Rider here, so... We'll see where this winds up. Plenty of options. Wouldn't be surprised to see this as a support bat rider for like Kuro. I know he used, he ran that a long time ago, and now it's remaining. even better with like China running it quite a bit too. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Yeah, and with um, what we assume both supports already being shown here, it uh, doesn't leave any room for like a silencer, which would be one of the better heroes to try and deal with something like that. Uh, we often see it picked up with the Bat Rider these days to really help accelerate the hero. So unless we end up with like a a core one here, probably not going to be an option here for Liquid. Ten seconds remaining. Dire team pick. Yeah. I, oh, it's, it's the ranged bear. I don't think the other bear is a bear anymore. I, that's not even a hero. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Legion Commander. Liquids turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. And I, I mean, I guess it gives you a little bit more of that lockdown that you were talking about, a way to be able to control that very lone druid if you're going to be able to get it at all because you know, Savage Roar doesn't care or rather Duel doesn't care a whole heck of a lot about Savage Roar um, I guess laning wise is maybe a little bit of an issue do you think that with Shadow Demon Marana roaming around like is that something that they're going to be looking to do is is try and find those pickoffs or do you think that Legion Commander can needs a little bit of help in her own lane uh, Legion should be relatively fine. I wouldn't be too concerned. Uh, there goes Baby Knight's hero. <laughs> yeah. The, the absolute classic Baby Knight sniper. Uh, I think the, the biggest thing will be how the off lane of the Radiant interacts with this Luna lane. So trying to figure out just how much attention Shadow Demon and Rana need to give up there. If they can get a couple of quick picks Ten and drive remaining. like that Slardar out of lane, if it ends up being him or the Bat Rider of lane, if that ends up being Mind Control's hero. Uh, trying to ditch them from there and Liquids wow. turn to pick. Yep.
10 seconds remaining. He really is, dude. He plays Sniper, Viper, Broodmother. Five He'll like run any of those things in the mid lane. Kind of a dick. God, baby, man. come on, come on, dude. <laughs> Play something exciting. No, it's a uh, nice little kind of sustain going just with Shouty and Marana. You don't have that like Witch Doctor Dazzle or something to go with your typical pushing strat. So now in addition to uh, your buffing from the Legion Commander, you can get a perhaps a mech going. Then again, with like Dragonlance and whatnot, you don't necessarily have to do those builds anymore on the Viper either. So yeah. he's a whole new hero, guys. What a time to be alive. Well, and of course the remodel, the most but, important part. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. Change. I don't know what these little things are here. He looks like yeah. he's got little whiskers coming out of his face. Or I envision it like he gets like a saddle and the, you like hold on to those. <laughs> They're like handlebars and you like steer them. Oh, that's great. Who would ride Viper? What would be the hero that would ride Viper? Obviously Batrider. That would be like a Batrider oh, cosmetic. Okay. See, I like the idea of Meepo doing it. All right, Ooh, we got the Drow Ranger. Filthy. Yeah, that is really rough. So the very frustrating to play against Lone Druid just became a little bit more buffed. And there's two other ranged heroes on this lineup as well. Team Liquid look to have a very strong draft. Do, do you favor it over what Cloud9 has thrown out there, though? Yeah. Eh. Yeah, yeah, I think I do. Um, I assume they're going to run this Lone Druid mid, I guess, uh, instead of doing kind of the safe lane style we were watching our TZ play and send the Drow Ranger to the bottom. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, both heroes kind of similar, but with Lone Druid's Savage Roar, a little bit easier to escape. Uh, I guess it uh, maybe it comes down to who they prioritize not dying. If they're really too worried about the Lone Druid, they might not be willing to send a mid, but this is going to be very exciting. I've been thinking about this draft range of the whole draft for kind of Cloud9, just wondering if they're going to make some sort of a switch up and do that somehow, but when the Legion came out, uh, I, I guess I kind of forgot about the hero here. Right at the end, um, like Warlock being good against Legion, or um, rather Drow drafts, though. Um, Legion Commander is also pretty good against these uh, Drow kind of pushing styles. So, throwing mm -hmm. out a couple of those uh, cues could be handy. Well, we'll see how it ends up working out. We've seen a good amount of Drow Ranger. It's going to actually be a miracle Drow. So, I guess that is Matumba taking the mid lane. Yeah, he's okay. uh, he's definitely the bear player, and I think it does yeah. make more sense to send the bear mid. So, okay. Better survivability in general. Well, uh, it's no real surprise as far as, you know, the, the movement around the maps and what the lane is going to be. Uh, it does look like Rise here is going to be heading up towards the top, placing down a ward of his own. They are going to be uh, not quite scouted out by this one, it looks like. They are going to see Ace, who moves up to secure himself a rune as well. But do you think that this dual lane of the Batrider and Slardar together is going to be strong enough to really contest what Cloud9 are throwing their way? Uh, that, that'll be the big question, honestly. It all just comes down to these disruption and arrows. If you get a couple of quick kills, you might be able to force them out, send my control into the jungle, and then GH kind of gets in this awkward place where he has the boots, so maybe he can go in for a gank, but mid can't set up unless there's some weird, like, bear begins. savage roar back into a Sardar who's, like, waiting. Like, it's just not going to work because you just yeah. roar towards your base and whatnot, so... Uh, Slider is probably going to have the toughest time in this game, at least getting things working. Yeah, that's going to be a, a very contentious point. And, you know, early kills, it's obviously going to be good for him. He it does start with those boots first, as you talked about. Well, he'll get the D ward here. Is he going to actually go to finish this off? I imagine they give that to the Slardar, right? Oh, no. Oh. They got so close. Oh. 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 That was close. Oh. That could have been a lot worse. Yeah. Well, they get it at least. So good stuff there. Stunt coming out onto Ace, starting to stack up the sticky napalm. Batrider lanes are hard to deal with. They ain't no lion. Ace already down to below half HP. They get another crush now and a rise as well. Noya has three stacks on him with a fourth there as well. They need to be careful. They're taking a lot of damage in this lane. Yeah, they're staring at a lot. Like, they have the shrine to back them up too. So they're just fully willing to spam out all their skills right now from GH and Mind Control, just knowing that they're going to burn through. It's only two tangos on Rise and two tangos on Noya. And it's mm. also even on Ace now, down to two tangos and a salve. 
Yeah, that is really scary stuff. And Mind Control did just use his healing salve so he can be full HP going in to harass them again. We'll have to see how this lane works out. Mid, at least so far, uh, it's looking like, you know, the Tumbo Man's been able to have a pretty decent time, 6-0 and versus the 5-1 and of the Viper. And bottom as well, Hester Joe should be able to get his farm. But I think that probably top lane is where we're going to be seeing a lot of the action taking place. Yeah, man, my controls are doing a nice job too, just like his general spacing. They're staying next to each other to make sure that the combination can't come from the arrow uh, and the disruption too. Just playing around the creeps right now for mind control. Mm. Yeah, very scary lane on both sides. And you know, Ace now having the Lucent Beam on top of bonus damage from Lunar Blessing. This could become a very quick pickoff for anybody, but they managed to get the pull and now the creep wave a little bit more into their favor with Equilibrium. Bounty runes will be picked up and Back to lane again. He's smoking. GH wants to go for a play mid, I guess. Is this a kill they can get? This will be uh, I guess they have the bonus damage from the Drow, but he doesn't have Rabid yet because he's still just level three. Oh my goodness, I missed it. Sorry guys, disruption top lane into an arrow. Easy peasy, they find it. All right, well, I'm fired. That's for well, sure. <laughs> yeah. Eh, I don't know, this is tough mid. If it's anytime with Gank of Viper, it's certainly early, but yeah, they just decide against it. They're just like, this, this isn't going to work, guys. Even with the Rabid. I mean, that was one of those moments as well where maybe if it wasn't a DD rune there, they end up going for it regardless because, you know, you, you, with a DD, you're worried you might end up getting picked off or something. But you now, bottom lane going okay for the Legion Commander. Six last hits so far. It does feel like maybe a missed opportunity with that movement by GH that mind control isn't going to end up getting taken down there. Yeah, that really hurts too. Uh, that's that one kill they really need in this lane as the dire side. Just adding a couple levels up. Yeah. Put some more damage into the combinations from Shouty and Marana, and then just the general spells coming out from AC. Chucks out some Lucent Beams, so they didn't even get all that bullying that I think they wanted. Uh, weren't able to fully abuse, get into the shrine, come back and abuse again. Oh. And now it's going to oh. be a, a lot more stable than it was for the um, first little while. And, and yeah, they're even feeling bold enough to gank bottom and leave Luna all alone. This might be risky, though. Yeah, this is very, very bold. Luna Ace ends up getting caught out a little bit. It doesn't look like they're actually going to be able to punish this, though. No sight right now on the rest of the side of Cloud9. But Luna can just farm with a couple of those Lucent Beams being thrown out. See if they can make this happen. It does feel like Liquid is aware that something is up, though. Yeah, they still haven't shown... Um, GH, like, they had this ward here, too. They didn't see the supports there. They might have thought they smoked mid, but Matumba Man's, like, in the river, so... Miracle is playing this very carefully. Not going out to get the creeps at all, although he is going to move over now to the camp, and this will be scouted. So, might be able to rotate in. There's Rise moving forward, and this probably is going to be a kill now on to Miracle. He's going to need some serious 9k action to get out of this one. Arrow off the mark, but Miracle still going to end up going down. Kuroki is here as well. Three-person crush, and might be enough to be able to find the kill. Hesajo just says he wants to get out of there. GH, meanwhile, also going to be chasing down. Noya is going to be able to find the secondary crush, and they do get that kill as well. No more mana right now for a third crush, but still, they end up taking two. I think Noya, the Radiant Creepway, was chasing him, and so he knew that if he didn't throw it right then, they were going to get in the way. So that's why he uh, missed it. He tried to go on like the earliest possible end of that disruption coming out. Oh. Yeah, and I, I think that, you, I mean, you can understand the, the desire for it, but a little bit off the mark. And Well, back up towards top now. You do have Noya in the area to help out Luna. Batrider was kind of just running at her constantly, but the early movement around, you can see that Liquid is still taking an advantage just based off of solid laning, it feels like. Yeah, nice little, like, in the net where oh. it's big, like, quad core, and yeah, I'm in mind control, too. This would be a close, possible double kill. Or oh, double maybe? death, that is. Uh, yeah, nope. Not able to get it. Can't, uh, can't get the suicide pack with Ace going, so... Well, in the meantime, mid lane, they have been able to kill off the bear of Matumbo Man, who's going to start to get ran down a little bit. Does still have Soul Catcher on him, so needs to be careful about this. Trying very aggressively towards that Viper. The prize is mine. Yeah, for the most part, though, he's kind of weathered the storm mid. He's now level 6. And uh, there was no rotation from Shadim and Nirana. 
He's got his phase boots up. He's very slippery. So those two, like, popping out of smoke or something won't quite have the range to just immediately initiate on him unless he gets Viper Striked or something. Mm. That'll be on cooldown for quite a while as they pressure into this tower heavily with Kuro. Now they're there. Damage is being dealt, and the tower is going to keep on being pressured at least a little bit. But the movement in now, Rise wants to find this initiation. They do also have the Slardar coming in from the other side, so they need to be careful. Oh, Gens getting caught. Good press the attack. Hestijo not able to chase that one down. Doesn't have duel up yet, but with Ace also going to TP in, it looks like that should call off the rest of the charge. And Mind Control going to take this time to pressure Noi out of lane. Oh, yeah. This is great for Mind Control. Luna TPs out. Got Firefly off cooldown. Time to farm some creeps. Fat stacks, oh, some neutrals too. Uh, Ace is here. TP in one second. To, uh oh, uh oh, oh, my control. <laughs> okay, that. Uh, listen, beam. Yeah, he is can fog though. Away. Yeah, he does have his TP available as well. So yeah, I should be able to escape from that one. Well, Hester Joe's gonna go back to farming. While well, Miracle does a little bit of chip damage onto this tower. Now double tranquils up on both GH and my control too. So they are very fast. All right. Well, we're about that seven minute mark, seven and a half minute mark. We haven't seen any towers fall as of yet, but a good amount of damage is being dealt across the board. It feels like Liquid are trying to be the aggressors. Is that something that you see to kind of continue throughout this game, them wanting to keep up pressure? Uh, I wouldn't call it like full team aggression. I would call it kind of a, uh, a double aggression, mostly from Mind Control and GH to try and buy some time and space from Atoma Man, uh, as well as Miracle. Just let them get up some better items. Don't worry too much about big five-man smoke ganks or anything like that. They just want to pressure up on the top lane, make sure Ace isn't too out of control, and keep trying, drawing lots of attention up here. If you can keep the supports up here and away from these two farming cores, I would consider yeah. that a, a pretty good early game for Liquid. And now, look at this, too. Just so much pressure coming in. Mine's oh right from God. behind. Rise getting caught. They have him there. Kuro is also in the area, and he picks it up. Killing spree for him at this early level. He's gotten all the kills on his team so far. A very, very farmed Warlock to start this off. It, well, I guess not. <laughs> he hasn't gotten any last hits at all, pretty much. But part of those kills is pretty nice. Yeah, he's level 6. Miracle with a quick gust down bottom to push away Ace. Might secure his escape. Oh, they want to go for the duel. Not going to be able to get it. They also have the slow from oh, the Frost here. Hestijo is going to go down. Really nice play there. And Miracle ends up getting the kill. It turned around so quickly with that gust. Uh, top lane too. Noya being chased in the trees. I'll leap away. No TP cancel though. Not going to be able to find it. That bonus damage in Fountain, but not enough to kill. Hester Joe just uh, getting a little bit too antsy there, diving past that one little part of the tree line down bottom with no vision, quickly caught up by a nice TP from GH. So this, this guy is the support player, man. The the 9K support knows yeah. how to play some dotes. So very Absolutely. quick reactions. Alan well, Hester Joe up towards the top now has not been able to even use the duel once. So this is. One of those moments where you start to get a little bit antsy as the Legion Commander. Well, what's the play for him to get back into this game? Like, with phase boots, is he going to be able to start to make moves, or does he have to finish off that Blink Dagger or Shadow Blade first? They'll probably try some other smoke. Oh, actually, Noya and Ryze are going to smoke up by themselves, and I'm going to bring the Legion Commander with them, maybe hoping to mask their movements by doing so and leaving Noia or uh, Hesajo at least kind of showing top but they, they've just gone full pressure mode of the top lane Tom of Man and Miracle buddy system going they they know they have a little bit of an edge currently oh. up against C9 and so they can pressure some tier ones pretty easily but good reverse pressure down the bottom from Ace they're keeping that nice and, and well under control here is trying to go towards that Helm of the Dominator. Gloves of Haste done as well as that headdress. And those look like they might be going for a similar thing out of Viper. I guess that they might be going for a mech on Viper. Not yeah, exactly he does kind sure. of a... Uh, this is the same build he did the last time I watched the play. He ended up going... He actually went Dragonlance into bottom. Oh, that was a bit of a stomp, though. Duel. But... Over to the side. Miracle. They have the Eclipse Owls as well, so they don't get the damage, but they do find the kill. I think um, I think he likes to go for like an early headdress just because you need that little bit of regen on Viper, and then he'll opt in towards uh, could be the mech, could be the pipe if it fits the game. Mm. Always oh, get stunned up. 
Yeah, it's a problem. Pump Both fakes the ulti. The base, dude. Thinking about going for it. Rise getting gone on as well. Now they do have the crush for him. They finally drop the golem onto everybody, and it looks like they are going to at least be able to take out Rise if they decide to go for any more. Now the golem's gone, and so too is the rest of Liquid. But not a bad usage of that first golem. They use it to find a kill. Actually, it's, it's just the support. It's yeah, and rough. they killed Miracle uh, on C9, so it's yeah. a, a nice win for them. Well. Currently 11 minutes in, take a look at how the net worth is sort of looking, and Viper up on the top of it, at least for now. I just feel like he's going to be able to sort of levy this position into taking these fights. And Viper is not somebody to mess around with. The gank from GH as well as mind control is going to be coming, and everybody wants to get in on killing Baby Knight. Dude, just right again, this pressure so fast. Oh my god, that is a problem. Pushback, no lasso needed. Easy peasy for Liquid. The bear lasso, Visibility. just a, a casual route there. <laughs> yeah. Who said this guy was totally useless, you know? He still just walks around, at least roots people every once in a while. They're trying to find Miracle uh, with this ward down bottom, but there's that smoke play with the Legion Commander. Now the phases are up. It will be fruitless. They have a wrap mid, but this seems unlikely to catch Matamba. Yeah, just good recognition there again by Liquid as to what the movements were coming in from C9, and they don't manage to find it. Tower still goes down. They don't end up even beginning to the deny there. This has been a, after that nice pickoff that came about from Miracle, it's been a rough couple of minutes since. Yeah, and GH has been farming away too. This guy's almost up to a blink dagger at 13 minutes. So he's 0-0-6. Zero, zero, so many assists across the map involved in all six kills and even picking up a couple of neutrals along the way too so very very well done him and oh man this is terrifying like mind control <laughs> you just have like level eight slider level eight barrel you have two offlaners right now and they both have blinks yeah that's this is a rough one that that lane definitely worked out for them well and it, it's weird too because it, it felt like it was maybe going to fall apart there for a bit but they ended up putting it together towards the end. Um, at this point, if you're Cloud9, how do you deal with this? Do you need to try and sort of regroup and just split push, or, or is it try and take fights as five? Radiance top uh, If you look at Liquid, they kind of have the whole package. They have initiation coming from Slider and the Batrider, so they can gank you if you're alone. So if you're trying to do some sort of split push, they can just be smoking up and pressuring you. But they also have insane just five-man tower push. Oh, and Noya again is going to get caught out here. So, well, Hesijo comes in to try and break it, but now he's going to get caught upon as well. Can they bring him down before the invis is there? They oh, have nice the dust. dust as well to reveal. Oh, Rise, you're in some trouble as well, trying to run away, brought down again. And Noya also revealed, but not able to make the full play onto them. Now they're heading back towards mid. They, they're not stopping. They just want to keep on going. Oh, this trade is not going to work out. Blink Crush. Oh, Baby Knight caught again. Ace can't really run away now, and they end up getting caught by the Golem. It's all gone wrong for Cloud9. Eclipse is not going to do a damn thing as Ace drops as well. Liquid looking incredibly strong right now. Yeah, their group up play has been quite remarkable. Uh, again, it all kind of harkens back to this dual off lane and just how strong this slide at Batrider. It really is. It's two initiators. I mean, they're insanely firm. They're both above the off laner on the side of C9. Liquid yeah. really sniped a nice position by just getting this Drow Ranger. Uh, a hero that, you know, can not always get away with lanes, but with the Legion Commander there, they just didn't really see the pressure and knew that Luna would probably need a little bit of help top as long as they forced the Batrider and the slider up there. And Kuro doesn't need all that much on position 5, so he's happy to buy a couple of these items. Of course, he does have that Midas queued up rather wishfully. And maybe GH will buy some items now that he has, uh, or some wards rather, now that uh, he's got his Blink Dagger. Yeah, I mean, you don't really need a whole heck of a lot else as a Slardar, right? I mean, you just keep start farming heroes at that point. Be a part of those kills. Pick up a Bounty Rune here and might run into the rest of the side of Cloud9. They would love any type of pick off at all at this point. It just feels like they're kind of getting rolled. You look at the net worth right now, 6,000 into the favor of Liquid with right around 7,500 experience. There needs to be a change soon here. It's crazy how much Liquid have just pushed this entire game their direction. And how long was this ward down? I mean, this ward went the full expiration without even doing a single thing. Oh, God. And Rise. 
Yeah, this, I mean, he gets his ward down, but now looking for a bit more. You do have GH with the Blink Dagger off cooldown. Five seconds immediately takes off the Corrosive Haze. Mind Control going to get gone upon here as well. Baby Knight is there. They do have the damage coming out onto them. Noya taking a good bit as well. The Fatal Bonds is just destroying everybody from Cloud9. And, well, can they get a bash? They need one here. Oh, it's not going to end up happening. Didn't even have it leveled up. So certainly weren't going to find it there. And now... <laughs> oh, the root, though. Oh, Ace. When it rains, it pours for Cloud9. Hopes and dreams just turn into ashes in their mouths. My and goodness. they also got top. For Liquid, too. So the way they have pushed this whole game has kind of been absurd. Uh, they also know this ward is here. Crow's pinging it out. He's like, yeah, uh, there's definitely a ward up there. Can my bat rider please go deal with that? Thank you. They, uh, they they tried to put this kind of pressure on from C9 where they had this ward down bottom and we saw two full smokes go through with Shadim and Marana and then Shadim and Marana and Legion Commander. But we had a Drow Ranger and a Lone Druid just like living up here. They have knocked down yeah. all the towers and they made that big swing around into the mid play now. They're just going to group up, come mid with Golems back up. They're killing oh. Less Joe. He's gone. Yeah. He just wants to farm. This guy just wants any type of initiation item. He's got phase boots and a poor man's shield at this point at 17 minutes. It has just been a hard life. And look at the tumble man's wrench. They're so fragmented. It's... It's like Liquid just go for this five-man play, and they can force C9 to come back, and then they can just, like, walk to another lane and just do it again. Uh, you've got these guys trying to farm up top. Uh, Baby Knight, he goes to the same bots build that he went the last time he played Viper. And it, it's kind of helping with the split push, but it doesn't matter when they kill your towers this fast. I mean, Miracle's not even hitting the tower. He's, like, farming the creeps. He just doesn't care. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's got a Shadow Blade now as well, on top of that little wolf with him on the... Helm of the Dominator. So, Shrine's next. Roche, I yep. mean, they've already taken it. It's it's just going from bad to worse. Cloud9, it feels like they're pretty much almost out of this game at this point. Yeah, it's. I mean, you, you start to look at this and you're like, okay, well, they have Drow and Lone Druid. So once we get to the high ground, then we have the big turnaround plays. But, that, you know, they're rocking a Viper over here on the Dire. There's no Storm Spirit or something who's going to magically kill five heroes every time. It is no. still a Viper. They don't have the best AoE, kind of an offlaner. There's no Shaker or Darkseer or something for the, the giant turnaround play. If they do turn this game around, it's going to come from consecutive single pickoffs, it looks like. Uh, I find it hard to believe they're going to find a big AoE team fight through just Luna against the current roster of uh, Liquid. and uh, They're happy actually just kind of poking in high ground while they still have a little bit of this Aegis left here. Well, Arrow. Ooh, Matumba Man dodges away at the last second there. Could have been a little bit scary, but... Still a full I mean, minute. Yeah. This is this is a problem. Little wolf is gonna get taken down, but there's the jump forward, crush onto Ace. Fine. Arrow is gonna connect onto the bear. Have another bear here, and the silence now onto Baby Knight. Not gonna be able to really follow up too much more into that, but he has already dropped so low again. Where's my miracle 9k helm steal? <laughs> get that wolf. <laughs> he doesn't want to get Take too it. close. All right, in the meantime, Kuro is just going to make the drop and sound as Ace already gone and gone upon. They didn't end up throwing out the lasso as of yet. Trying to look for a response. Baby Knight dropping so low, but Tumbleman Man just kills him off because this build is absurd. He does so much damage. Look at it. Uh, did almost 300 a pop. And on such fast movement speed, they don't <laughs> oh, spamming it out. But Tumbleman Man low, but not dead yet. Look at oh. him run. Yeah. Crush, then healed up. I have the imprisonment. Fine. He's like hasted. Yeah, he's really quick. <laughs> this is silly. 462 movement speed. 390 or 290 damage. I mean, I think a lot of heroes would look really OP if you had a Mjolnir before 20 minutes. But yeah. the fact that you don't really need a defensive item just makes this guy so ridiculous. You just I always have this bear that you can bring back. And savage Roarway, control it up that way. You're also just generally pretty beefy. 
It is certainly something else. He uh, appears to be heading in towards a Scott. He's got to make use of that early game Orb of Venom. No gold going to waste here in the current Lone <laughs> Druid build from Atoma Man, you know? Absolutely. That's good strat. Damage. Well, all right. You know what? We got to we gotta find some light here for all those Cloud9 fans in the world. I mean, I know that they're used to a certain place hey, at various points, but we got we to gotta find it. We got a Blink Dagger up on Legion Commander, right? This is This is looking okay there. We got Marana. She's building back towards a, an Aghanim Scepter. It's going to be a little ways away, but, you know, 1,700 gold is an incredibly hard to come by. Just hit a couple creeps, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. I think the only way they would have fight that I could see would be Matamba Man gets arrowed for max duration. Okay. That, that has to happen. I don't even think they can kill Matamba Man. You have to, like, All kill right. someone else. You, know, you like, <laughs> Maybe you kill Kuro. But if you try and kill Kuro, you're going to get Blink Crushed or Blink Lasted by Mind Control. Try and kill Miracle, you're going to get Savage Roared. For... Actually, if you try and arrow Matumba Man, someone's going to get Savage Roar anyway. So yeah, they actually just can't win a fight. Sorry. Okay. It's over, guys. <laughs> if it's 5v5, I don't see it happening. Okay. But I'm, I'm glad to be proven wrong. Go it, Cloud9! Well, <laughs> there you go. I, I think it can happen. I still believe. Oh, I'm... We'll see how this ends up working out. Their backdoor protection is off on this tier 3 tower. They've got creeps going in. Nobody is defending this right now for Cloud9, so maybe this is the way to go. Oh god, there's a TP in. Baby Knight pulled back in as well. They are able to immediately take it off with the Legion Commander, so... That was nice. Still play they, there. they knew that was coming. Yeah. Esther was back there waiting for it, too. So there, they burnt Lasso. That's a nice win, actually. So that stops the Batrider blinking. Uh, we still have to worry about the Warlocks, though, Radiant's so Kuro, maybe next priority if they can get him quick enough, but difficult target. Jump Crush onto Hestajo, arrow coming out, not going to connect. Looks like they are going to be fine now. Silenced up Hestajo, but still the tower is falling. <laughs> right. Yeah, the Dragon Lance combo there together, that is that is some silliness. They smoke out. I do believe that uh, Liquid saw that smoke come out. That one, initiation, two-person crush, Shadow Demon gone, heads to Joe as well. They do manage to get the arrow, but Kuro comes down, drops it onto their face, the big golem. And now Baby Knight also going to get ran down. They buy back on the Shadow Demon. They desperately need this guy alive for any type of saving potential that they might have. And Matumbo Man still hitting away here. Can they do anything? Silence up oh die back for rise they get the crush gh4 steps himself away not gonna get caught at all noia also trying to run but well if there was any doubt before about liquid status they're proving it here still a tier one team as they take down ace immaculately gg gets called 23 minutes 22 to 5 there might have been a meme in there stuff damn they they actually look fantastic they played very well Great movement around the map. Uh, maybe just a straight up draft win too.